This video is part of the Manual Transmission Self-Study Course. It is designed to be used together with the Manual Transmission Self-Study Guide. Both the Self-Study Guide and this video are divided into individual lessons that cover specific topics. To achieve the maximum amount of learning from these training tools, first watch the lesson on the video, then stop the tape and read the corresponding lesson in the Self-Study Guide. After answering the review questions in the self-study guide, restart the video and follow the same procedure for the next lesson. Today's Ford cars and trucks use the most advanced engines ever built. These engines are powerful, efficient, clean, and economical. However, even modern engines have limits. Like their predecessors, modern engines only produce power within a very narrow range of RPM. And although they are more powerful than ever, internal combustion engines only produce a limited amount of torque. For these reasons, the engine must be connected to a transmission. The purpose of the transmission is to multiply the power of the engine while keeping it within the correct RPM range. The transmission does this by taking the torque which is the turning force created by the engine, and using gears to multiply it. Doing this increases the power of the engine, allowing it to move the vehicle throughout its speed range. Manual transmissions allow the driver to precisely control this torque and power. Ford uses many different types of manual transmissions. However, they all share many common components. All manual transmission equipped vehicles have a clutch. The clutch is a coupling that mounts between the engine and transmission. It allows the transmission to be engaged and disengaged smoothly from the engine. On rear wheel and four wheel drive vehicles, a conventional manual transmission is used. It bolts to the rear of the engine and uses a drive shaft to transmit power to the differential and axles. Front wheel drive vehicles use a unique type of transmission system called a transaxle. It combines both the transmission and differential into one unit. However, because the driving wheels on a front wheel drive vehicle are also used for steering, a special type of drive shaft is needed. Front wheel drive shafts are known as half shafts. Each of these systems will be described in detail in this self-study course. Stop this tape now and read lesson one in your self-study guide. After answering the review questions, restart the tape and watch Lesson 2. All vehicles with manual transmissions or transaxles use a manual clutch to smoothly connect and disconnect the engine from the transmission. When the driver pushes down the clutch pedal, the clutch disengages. This disconnects the transmission from the engine. When the clutch pedal is raised, the engine and transmission are gradually engaged, allowing a smooth application of power to the driving wheels. This action is required because the torque of the engine must gradually be transferred to the wheels until the vehicle begins moving. The clutch also must be disengaged during shifting or damage to the components of the transmission will result. The basic operation of a clutch is very simple. A friction disc is sandwiched between two driving discs. When the clutch pedal is pressed down, one driving disc is forced away from the other. This frees the friction disc, which is connected to the transmission input shaft. This allows the input shaft to stop rotating while the engine can continue to run. When the clutch pedal is gradually raised, the two driving discs are allowed to slowly come together again. As they contact the friction disc, the input shaft begins to turn. This quickly brings the rotation speed of the friction disc to the same speed as the driving discs. The driving discs used in clutch systems are the flywheel, which is bolted to the engine crankshaft, the pressure plate, which mounts to the flywheel, and the clutch disc, which is the friction element that is sandwiched between them. While these are the main components of the clutch, there are several other parts that are essential in the operation of this system. Let's look at each of these parts and the role they play in the operation of the clutch. The foundation of the clutch is the flywheel. 
its smooth surface must be free of irregularities or clutch concerns can result. The next component of the clutch system is the clutch disc. Friction material is bonded and riveted to both sides of the clutch disc. In the center of the disc are splines that connect it to the transmission output shaft. There are also dampening springs built into the disc to help smooth out engine pulsation. The pressure plate is the other driving disc of the clutch assembly. It applies and releases the clutch disc during engagement and disengagement. When the driver disengages the clutch by pressing down the pedal, the pressure plate is forced away from the flywheel, releasing the clutch disc. When the pedal is raised, the pressure plate is forced back against the clutch disc and flywheel by a strong return spring. The component that does the work of moving the pressure plate is the release bearing. This lubed for life bearing presses against the diaphragm spring fingers of the pressure plate, forcing the pressure plate away from the flywheel and releasing the clutch disc. Another bearing used on some vehicles is the pilot bearing. It is located in the center of the flywheel or in the end of the crankshaft. The pilot bearing supports the input shaft of the transmission and allows the crankshaft to rotate around the input shaft without turning it when the clutch is disengaged. The linkage between the clutch pedal and the release bearing is another important feature of the clutch. Ford uses cable and self-adjuster or hydraulic linkages to allow the clutch pedal to control the release bearing. This completes the Lesson 2 video presentation. For more detailed information on the clutch, stop the tape now and read Lesson 2 in your student reference guide. The gears and shafts inside a transmission transmit rotating motion. To understand transmission power flow, one of the first things that you must understand is how gears rotate. One basic rule of gear operation is that gears in mesh rotate in opposite directions. To make two gears rotate in the same direction requires that a third gear be inserted between them. Knowledge of gear design is also important when working with transmissions. There are three basic types of gears that you will see in manual transmissions and transaxles. The first is the spur gear. This type of gear has straight teeth. Because spur gears are noisy, they generally are only used for reverse gears on modern transmissions. The most common type of gear found in transmissions are helical gears. The teeth of this type of gear is cut at an angle. This does make them very quiet. However, helical gears cannot be moved in and out of mesh with each other. The final type of gear that you will see in this self-study course is the spur bevel gear. The manual transaxle differential uses spur bevel pinion and side gears. Now that you have seen the type of gears found in transmissions, let's look at how these gears work. Gears are just circular levers. Because of the differences in their diameter, they are used to change torque and rotation speed. Let's see how this is done. Here we see two gears in mesh. They are the same diameter and have the same number of teeth. Since each gear is the same size, they both rotate at the same speed and with the same amount of torque. This is a one-to-one -one gear ratio. However, if we take a smaller diameter gear, for example with 12 